Consider my timbers shivered. Welcome, my friends. Welcome once again to the gaming galleon. I'm Cap'n Rass. Nothing special about me. Look, I just got lucky one day. Happened to win a pirate ship in a Street Fighter 2 match with a guy who was three sheets to the wind. Next thing you know, here we are. But look, before I was a pirate, I was into video games. I don't know about you. And I may have one or two of them floating around. So I thought, geez, wouldn't it be nice to put them somewhere? And that we did. Right here on the ship. There are a myriad of games. Large, small, valuable, and invaluable. Sitting within decks, this beautiful ship you see before you. We stand within the captain's quarters, and luckily, we happen to have a computer that we have dubbed the Navigator, broadcasting to you with. But there is something very interesting about navigator. See, it is not just some computer that happens to play video games. No, something magical, something different, something ethereal happens. Pop a game into it. it directs the ship. It reads information within that small little piece of software. Tells the ship to go. Pretty fascinating stuff, huh? Where did it take us this year? This voyage? Well, it's Halloween season, and I thought I would want to share with you a game that most of you have not heard of. Or at least not cared to know. And let me tell you, my friends, that an egregious error. It is on the Game Boy. Okay. It is also made by Konami. And it fits quite well into the season. Now maybe some of you have had Game Boys in your time. And maybe some of you have heard of a co company called Konami. And maybe some of you have heard that they make some halloween -y games. Castlevania, perhaps. Pennsylvania. Now, some of you a little more versed. Some of you who may fancy yourselves video game aficionados would say, oh, well, <laughs> here we go with Kid Dracula again. A game made by Konami that has some lineage and canon with Castlevania. Now, why would I do that to you? How am I going to do that to you? No, you come here to learn. Boy, am I going to teach you. Today, my friend, we'll be playing Game Boy Color Game by Konami. Entitled The Mummy. The Mummy. You're going to shove a license the game down our throat for some movie? Seriously? See you later! That, don't do it. Don't do it. Because let me tell you something. If you haven't seen this one, if you have not exhumed this from the decades of sentiment of software, you're going to be shocked. Because this is more than just a licensed game. This, my friends, is far and away more of a fascinating and true title to Castlevania and Konami games of old than you would ever imagine. Get into that soon. The movie of which this is adapted to 
took place around 20 years ago. And I've not seen it. Because who cares? I found this game one day, and for whatever reason popped it in and played it all the way through years ago. And I always knew that on some hallowed Halloween season, we have to share it with you. Now the main basis of the game is three adventurers find their way to what is named the City of the Dead in an attempt to assume great riches. But just like the dwarves of the Tolkien universe dug too deep, found themselves in the clutches of a long-dead high priest, Imhotep, buried 3,000 years ago. Now, in the movie, from what I understand, Imhotep is a pretty evil guy. Apparently, he is a high priest. And I think he has a little funny business with the pharaoh, which is why he gets uh, buried a little too prematurely. Okay? But in fact, Imhotep is an actual historical person. And boy, what a guy this guy was. 3,000 years ago, in a town called, believe it or not, Memphis, Egypt, a commoner was born. And there was something bright about this guy. As the years went on, he was coming up with brilliance never before seen. He became a physician, an astronomer, a stonemason, but his real passion was architecture. As the years went on, he became so respected that he became the high priest of Ra, the sun god, in Egyptian mythology. And it was a good thing the Egyptians had him, because one day the Nile River, which was basically the lifeline for Egypt, and where all the cities sat on the bank began to dry up. And it was seven long, dark years of the kingdom. Poverty and crime was on the rise. That's when the pharaoh, Dodger, proclaimed, we got to do something about this. Get me the smartest guy in the land. Get me Emotep. So Emotep showed up. Dodger's like, I don't know what to do here. You got to help me. Uh, everyone's in chaos. You have an idea. And Emotep said, well... <laughs> Every time I think about this part, I think, I think of what a scam he had going. He thinks, let me go on a spiritual journey. I'm not exactly sure what kind of instrumentality a man of his wealth and stature needs to go on a spiritual journey. But whatever he was up to, it seemed to have worked. He had a dream from one of the other gods in Egyptian mythology. And he said, uh, you know, this god is not happy. Apparently he tore down one of his temples and he has cursed the entire Nile as a result. You gotta get back in this guy's good grade. So Dodger, the pharaoh, is like, okay, all right, first of all, we'll rebuild the temple, and then we'll start tributing, okay? We'll start bringing in taxes for this guy, all right? Whatever we have to do, get out there and make this guy better on our side, okay? So that's what he does. The temple's erect. Tributes begin to pour in, and you know what else starts pouring in? The water. The Nile begins to flood once again. And oh boy, was everyone elated. No one more than Jodger the Pharaoh. So what did he say? He said, wow, Emotep, he did good. High priest is good. What do you think about being the Grand Vizier? My second in command. And around that neighborhood, a guy who obtains that level is not only someone of high intellect, one of supernatural. 
Dodgers roll on. Prosperity during Dodgers reign continues. And he gets up in years and decides, well, I suppose it's time for me to consider what I'll be leaving behind and also how I'm going to make my way up into the clouds. And an Egyptian mythology it's very important for the body to stay preserved so that once they reach the gods, they can recognize it. Believe it or not, your body is like your ID up there in the clouds for the Egyptians. But this guy's, you know, a pharaoh. The pharaoh. And he's got Emotep on his side. So he says, Emotep, how am I going to go out in style? Emotep says, all right, well, you, you, know the, you know the drill. Most pharaohs, they get uh, put into a mastaba, which is basically a longhouse of mud. And then they're buried underneath. It's grandiose, but it's, you know, it's old hat. So this is what I propose. How about instead of one mastaba? And by the way, I had to research this. And let me tell you something on a side note. If you ever want to learn anything about mastabas, don't ever use a works Google search to type in mastaba phonetically, okay? Trust me, what comes up is not the kind of stuff you want to get when you're 9 to 5, all right? Anyway, back to Emo Tependa. He says, how about, since you're so great, and I'm such a great architect. Instead of making you one mastaba, we make you seven. And Dodger's like, what? I mean, look, you know, I don't want to break your, you know, innovate, innovative spirit here, but how are you going to put me into seven mastabas? You can't cut me up. The gods are never going to find me. My body's got to be intact, right? And he says, of course. Of course, I wouldn't think of it. Don't worry, we're going to have lots of real estate in this situation. We're going to make more than just where you're rested. We're going to make a bunch of temples, a bunch of burial chambers, uh, you know, pr preparation burial areas, and of course, you know, chapels for all the uh, priests who are going to, you know, maintain the place. But where you sit, where you lay for eternity, you're going to be underneath the mastaba. But these other six that I'm thinking about, we're not going to spread them around. We're going to put them on top of each other. Oh, yeah. And we're not going to use mud. We're using lime rock, baby. We're going to make this guy stick. This guy's going to be around for centuries. So Emotep begins. He makes one mastaba. Then he makes a second mastaba, which is slightly smaller than a third then a fourth, then a fifth, and finally a sixth. And boy, if you happen to take a couple steps back and look at that guy, you might just call it a pyramid. And from then on, Pharaohs considered that the gold standard of how to be laid. All right, what do you say we play a little video game? We're going right into the tomb of Emotep, which, by the way, historically, has yet to be officially discovered. They happen to think it's in a town called Saqqara, Egypt, which is also where Dodger's first pyramid was erected. This is not a typical town. It's just outside the suburbs of... Of, is basically the suburbs of where Emotep grew up, Memphis, but it's all for the preserved dead, otherwise known as a necropolis, otherwise known as the city of the dead. Let's get started. For God's sakes, we have some booty to get into. We have a mailbag to get into. We can't just be playing video games! It's the mummy. By Konami! 
for the Game Boy Color. Let's do it, baby. All right, we're going to give you a little audio. Okay. A little Egyptian audio there. And why don't we give you some video? Huh? Put my old headphones on here so I can enjoy the music. Oh, yeah. Are you already getting that Konami vibe? What do you see? What's going on in the tomb of Emotep? This Hamanatri here, that's the Hollywood name for Sakara. okay? We're going historical here. Let's get in there. So, take a look at this. Oh, hold on a second. I'm going to be having an issue here. at the recapture here on oh, sweetheart second girl. okay you're already getting 8 bit Konami Castlevania vibes where does it really come from where's the guy's face right come on if that's not Simon Belmont with a gun on his side, I don't know who is. As for gameplay, as I said, there's three adventurers here. Rick, who happens to be uh, a soldier, Evelyn, and Jonathan. We'll meet them later. But let me make one caveat here. The Tomb of Emotep, we just started this level. I've been playing this. I played it through years ago. But I have not been in here in a long time, and I didn't go any farther than this. As soon as I found the tem of Tomb of Emotep, which you have to travel across the Sahara in the game to reach, that's when I stopped. So you and me, baby! We're gonna try and find Emotep together. Really, we're here for riches. Hopefully, he's not home. Let's see what we can do. Two-button scenario here. Rick is jump. Oh my god. <laughs> if that didn't convince you, I don't know what's happening. Let's go again. They make it pretty easy on you. What do we have here? We have to find four runes, it looks like, huh? Alright, so clearly Rick can't jump that pit. Look at it, he's, he's dainty. Sure, he's got a gun, but that's not going to get him across there. So what do you say? We try somebody else. We'll try Evelyn. Okay, Evelyn's got no gun. But she's a little lighter in the loafers. Alright. I have a feeling she can get across this place. Alright, we made it. Oh my god, there's a ghost. Okay, so let's get Rick back. Oh man. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, there's some dynamite. We want to pick that up. Jonathan here is our demolitionist. We're going to grab the dynamite and then hightail it out of there before the ghost gets us. Got it. We're good. Okay, okay. So we have another pit. Let's use Evelyn to get across it. Oh my god! I hope you weren't counting on us seeing Emotep, because that may not happen. Alright, let's try it again. Alright, Evelyn. Okay. Jonathan, pick up the dynamite and get out of there. Okay. Evelyn. Okay. Now we have two ladders. One that it seems to be going into darkness. Let's see what's down here. Alright, this is a little brighter. But it seems to be blocked off by by stone. Luckily, we picked up this dynamite. Jonathan's going to place it and then head back up the steps. All right. The walls are clear. Okay. All right. We'll take Rick and see if we can explore here. Scarab. We got it. This appears to be some sort of trap there. You see that tripwire there? I don't know what to expect from it. I'm not going to touch it just yet. I don't know what this hieroglyph on the wall here is. I don't think it's anything. This looks like this floor is going to fall out. 
What else is here? If we take the other ladder, we can pick up some dynamite. Let's see if we can reach it without tripping that wire. We can't. Hmm. Tough call. Should we fall through the floor? Or should we try and... Oh, maybe we could jump that trip one. Yeah, I'm really worried about hitting that trigger. This is... Who knows what it is. Alright, good job, Evelyn. You got over it. Alright, Jonathan, you pick up that dynamite. He can only carry one at a time. Got it. We're gonna go back up. Watching for scarabs. Watch out! Ugh! Oh, I think he hit wreck. Alright, here's a torch. Oh my god! Only Evelyn can grab the torch. She's got it. Now we'll be able to see. Oh my god, I just put it out. Is it back here? Oh, damn it, Raz. I don't think that's going to be good. Maybe we'll find another one. Okay. As you can see, the, it looks like the level has looped. This is where we started. We're going to have to restart because Evelyn doesn't have the torch. Maybe we're going to have to walk in the dark. Oh, you see what happened there? It just dropped the rock. If we keep hitting that, that might close out the path in entirely. Uh, if we had a torch, we'd be in good shape. I guess we're going to have to fake our way through this. Okay. Alright, I have a feeling there is a wall here. Let's try and blow it up. No. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, how about this side? Let's try and blow up right here. Okay. No. Oh! Did he find a way through? Is there a ladder here? I think so. Alright, we're gonna restart. This is gonna happen. It's a Konami game. We'll try one more. And then... We'll hit the booty. How's that sound? Okay? You guys down for some booty? Hold on a second. Alright, Evelyn. Come on, sweetheart. There it go. There it go. Jonathan, grab that dynamite. Get out of there! Okay, Evelyn. Alright, let's find that torch, Evelyn. Jonathan, blow up the wall. Now, you may be thinking, uh, I know, you know the gamer tendency to always have to compare every game to every other game. We've already discussed Castlevania. From a gameplay perspective, some of you may be thinking, oh, this has some uh, Lost Viking vibes here. That's true. The interesting thing about this one, though, it's a little different. Oh, Evelyn got hurt. I uh, shouldn't even gone down here. Where was that torch at? I think it's in the next room. Um... In this game, some of the missions feature... Oh, damn it. I'm not doing well. Alright, I got the torch. Let's go back. Uh, some of these levels only feature one character at a time. Sometimes it's just Evelyn and Jonathan. I can't go up with this? Alright, she can't climb with the torch, so Jonathan's gonna have to climb. Alright, now that we're in the darkness, uh, Evelyn has the torch now, so we, now we can see what's going on. So here was the problem. Okay, what about over here? Oh, we didn't try here, but that's a dead end also. We're not gonna be able to reach there. Alright, let's pick up this dynamite. Hmm. I guess we're gonna have to drop through the floor, huh? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Alright, so... Jonathan's already got dynamite. Okay. How about down here? Is this where we fell through? Oh, this is new stuff. I don't want to ness... Oh my god. Ugh, oh, get off me! Damn it! Come on! Are you kidding me? Oh, we got him. Alright. See that red potion? We need that. 
So we're gonna go over this ladder. Oh my god, we're closing in that that stupid barrier. Okay, we're gonna fall through the floor. And the good thing here is there's two health potions. So we'll give one to Evelyn. I don't know if we should though. We should give it to Rick. I want to give it to Evelyn, but she might drop the torch. I don't think we can do that. Oh boy, that sucks. Oh, there's health all over the place. We should really pick one up for her, huh? We can't. Not yet. Alright, let's use Rick. Get past the scarabs. Go down here. Okay. Let's blow this up. And then we have to decide which way we're going to go. Can we get another dynamite? We might have to go right. Was there a dynamite this way? No, we're stuck here. Alright, so... Rick, blast your way through. Okay. Hurry on. Okay, there's rocks on the ground for attacks. Oh, boy. It's rough. Okay. Oh, man. We're out of dynamite. Oh, oh! There's no way out of this! Are we stuck again? This is where we needed to do that dynamite, I bet. I don't think there's any more dynamite where we can reach, is there? Not here. And not here either, so that means we're dead. Alright. We're gonna have to come back to this. <laughs> Be back. All right, it's booty time. Harper transitions bringing us back. Just put it back uh, and kill the audio here. The game. All right. So game the mummy for Game Boy Color. Did you see it coming? Are you serious? Can you believe the graphics on that? Oh, see you later, ship. All right. Yeah, Game Boy Color. Uh, believe it or not, we've actually done another game by the same development team uh, in the past. We did the Grinch once on uh, Cozy Lustery Christmas. Made by the same company. Uh, same, I, I say company, they're an extension of Konami. That's what sucks about trying to track down the other stuff these guys in particular made. Because I'd love to know if they made anything else for the Game Boy Color beyond the Grinch and the Mummy. Because, boy, do they seem to do a good job. And this one in particular. I mean, if you're into Castlevania, you want to get a hold of this one. It's creepy. It's got that style. It's got that gameplay. And it plays right all the way to the end. And don't worry. You don't have to see the stupid movie to get invested. All right. You guys have been very patient. How, much, how are we doing on time? Where are we at? I think we're 30 minutes in. Yikes. We're behind. We better get started over here. Don't worry. We're exhuming today in Egypt. And the booty is no exception. It's been sitting for a long time, waiting to be discovered. Not just by you, my friends. But by me as well. Swear to God. There's unknowns in here. It's a good deal, but I have no idea how good of a deal it is. We're going to find out together. We were at a pawn shop, and uh, this place generally, sometimes, gets rid of the overhaul by plastic wrapping 10 games together. For five effing bucks! Oh my god! What could be in here? It looks like it's Xbox titles. And what do we have on the front? Chronicles of Riddick? Worth nothing. Totally awesome game! I don't know what else is in here. A lot of these spines... Actually, there. I guess there may be some spines? I have no idea. I really haven't looked. I swear to god. Okay? This is how I've been looking at it. We're going to find out together, okay? Let's get a box cutter. Let's start exhuming, huh? What do you say? 
Let's find some treasure. All right, let's cut this. Paper. The crew was nice enough to allow me a box cutter today. They usually don't let me have sharp projects. They said, ah, if you bloody yourself, it's Halloween, right? Come on. There we go. Okay. Let's start with Chronicles of Riddick. Again, we got it for five. Okay. We'll should bang for five. Just because it says Chronicles of Riddick, we've gotten these packages before. It doesn't necessarily mean it's in there. Chronicles of Riddick, uh, Escape from Butcher's Bay. It's uh, a movie adaption. It's uh, basically a spinoff from uh, Pitch Black, I believe. Riddick was uh, one of the main characters. Who plays this? Vin Diesel? The game itself, though, exclusive to the old Xbox, the OG Xbox. Uh, first person, you're in a prison. It seems very dark to me, but definitely up uh, your general Xbox player's alley as far as action. It. Okay, let's see what's in here. It appears to be the game. Okay, we're in good shape there. Okay, and as for condition, decent. I would say playable. All right, we're good shape there. Okay. Even has some pretty decent box art here. The best looking Xbox game we've ever seen. And we've seen them all. All right, pal. Maybe we should get another hobby. All right, next one here. Oh, God. This is probably, they're probably all going to be a nightmare from there. I have no idea. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Any Juggalos in the house? Are you guys part of the Juggalo family? You will be now! It's Backyard Wrestling! Didn't we do a voyage on this? Which one is this? There goes the neighborhood! You got it! Alright, this feels... heavy, though. And look, it's got two... two in there? What's this? This this is not this this double disc thing. This is not a double disc game. It appears to have an instruction manual for twenty five to life, which, from what I remember, is like Star Wars Battlefront, but it's ghettos. Okay. I don't even know if that was offline. I know it was online though. Backyard wrestling. Let's see how it looks. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a consolation prize what, what do we got nothing <laughs> <Okay. laughs> backyard wrestling give me that do we have a lucy we can put in there get it out of here all right so that doesn't even count we got a case 25 to life instruction manual want to read some of that oh yeah next Oh, it's a great game. Just cause? Must be 18 to rent. How old do you got to be to buy it? Great game. Open world. Uh, it, was this one open world? Just cause 2 certainly was. I could see this maybe being a little more zone based. I'm pretty sure it was open world though. This came out kind of uh, on the heels of uh, the uh, you know Grand Theft Auto 3 revolution. Uh, this guy's a little more stunty, though. He can jump on cars. He can skydive. Uh, very over-the-top stuff. Just Cause 2. Could it be the best action game on the PS3? I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty good. Inside? Looking good so far. We've even got the manual. Okay. It's not bad. Not bad. As for condition. Oh, boy. Okay. Eh. I think that'll play. It looks dirty. There's definitely some fingerprints here, but this looks like it's stuff that can be wiped down. And then some just basic surface scratching. I think we have a complete playable copy here. Not too bad. I'm okay with that. All right. Got some action there. Got a first person game here, and we got an open world game here. I love, I always love judging lots by, you know, what genre is there. Do I have every genre I need to? If this is the only $5 lot, I had, you know, if I get sucked into a portal, 
uh, where it's just you know a, a, an endless void that stretches on beyond the horizon, but all that's there is one single Xbox, a television, and the five games I happen to have on me at the time. Are we okay? Can we survive eternity? Oh boy. <laughs> Maybe backyard wrestling's in here. Why? Why play backyard wrestling when you got chess master? I mean, talk about a good two-player game. This is a fighting game, right? Does chess count as a fighting game? The chess master. Looking good. Shocking. Shocking. The chess master would look okay. All right. Fair enough. Thank you, Ubisoft. Thank you for putting that one out, Ubisoft. We need it, especially on the Xbox. That's what I go to OG Bag Xbox for. It's chess master. Okay. All right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Really? Now, this is great. This is great. Shenmue 2? Wow. What a treat. What a treat. Ugh. Ugh. You're out in China? You're walking around the clustered city, city streets. You're taking part-time jobs. And by God, you're hitting the arcade. Yeah. Yeah, there's arcades in this. Ah. Oh. Now we're talking. It's going to be a heartbreak if this one doesn't look like it's in good shape. Should we check it out? All right, what's in there? Okay, uh, what is this? Is it some sort of... What? What is this? What do we have here? Some sort of promotional leaflet. A bunch of games. What's unseen? Never heard of that one. Links, Kung Fu Chaos, and Shemu 2. Alright. Shemu 2, the disc, thankfully, is here. That would have been a heartbreak. How's she looking? Are we going to be able to go to China on this baby? Is this baby going to take us to China? I sure hope so. Oh! 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 It's in beautiful shape! Oh, man. Hmm. Yeah, that a girl. That a girl. That's, a, that's the nicest one we've gotten. I'm in on that. Ugh. That alone. Five bucks on Shemu 2. Puh. That alone. We're doing good here. I'm very happy. What's this? There's a Hollywood rental sticker. Bloodwake. Ugh. Twisted Metal with Boats. Great game. I think this is a one-player mode, too. Is that right? Maybe an arcade mode? And it works. This looks good to me. This looks good to me. No manual. Definitely a rental case here. Blood Wake. Let's see what it says in the back. It's got the whole thing here. Let's see. Uh, any, there's no story. It's just it, it, It's like your typical guy who walks into a guy playing a blind RPG and just starts telling him the ones and zeros of how to play it. That's exactly what's going on here. Fair enough. We'll figure out the story on our... All right, what do we got here? I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> I can't believe it's working! <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right, we're back. All right, what's this? What's this? Oh! 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 oh for f what? We're getting this in a five dollar lot? Oh, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Midway Arcade Treasures. Oh, Smash TV. I wonder how that would be with an Xbox controller. Smash TV. I, I, I never like playing with dual analog with Smash. What, what would be good on this? Robotron's on this. Uh, Root Beer Tapic, Tapper. Satan's Hollow. Rampage on an Xbox, I can only imagine. Joust 2, that one's kind of hard to find. Blaster, is that, uh, what's Blaster? Is that Robotron 2? What am I thinking of? No. Ah, what is Blaster? Blaster's really good. Uh, Road Blasters is on this. Spy Hunter, Defender 1 and 2. Four player Gauntlet. There. Now that's a game that, that is good on. Good to play on the Xbox, original Xbox. Four-player gauntlet. That's beautiful. I'm all about that. Ugh. We're doing so good. Inside, we got the manual. She looks like she's in beautiful shape. The disc. 
Definitely doable. Definitely doable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. What a great lock this is. This baby's been waiting for you guys. A long time. We're seriously zooming here. What do we got? Stolen? Okay. See, this is great. This is our mystery title from the lot. We're not really sure what to do. I haven't heard. Side looks like it's a nice complete. Okay. Looks like it's got some rental stickers. Oh, this this disc looks better than Shemu too. Oh yeah. Infiltrate, steal, and unrisk. Okay, this is great. We got a stealth game here. Again, rounding out this lot. What a great lot we have. We have an arcade. We have uh, an open world adventure. First person. I haven't seen a first. Ironically, I haven't seen a first person shooter here for an Xbox lot. That's kind of a surprise. Stolen. By, uh oh, made by Hip. I don't know. Hip's not generally that hip. One player. Feel the thrill of modern thievery. Lockpick. Audio deadly traps, hack cameras, so on and so on and so on. Okay. Yeah, I'm all about, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's just the fact that there's a self, you know, we're rounding out. I'm so into that. Okay. And it wasn't Metal Gear that was our self. We've got enough Metal Gear. Give us something new. All right, what's this? Uh-oh, it's black. What's on the other side? I figure it out? I have no idea. What is that? Something black and white. There's a moon there? Any theories? Dark watch? Oh, there's a little person. No, that's trees. What do you think? Any guesses? Better figure it out, huh? Yeah. Uh Tenshu? Oh man. Wow. And she returned to darkness. Not bad. Well, this would be our second stealth game, but in a totally different light. Stolen was kind of like infiltration. Uh, you know, uh, not infiltration. They're both infiltration. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Espionage. Whereas this is ninjas. Looks good to me. Feudal Japan and contemporary stealth. Choose your flavor. I'd pick Tenchu all day. All right. That's it? That's it? This final one? What are we missing here? I don't think I've seen a first-person shooter. Is Riddick a first-person shooter? It's got to be, right? I think there's more to it than that, but that's got to have guns. We haven't seen a racing game. I think that that's, that's been the big hole. Do we have it here? What is this? Crave? That's Carve? Carve? That's, that would qualify. It looks like it's... Uh, what is it? Water skis? Is it called carve because they're carving through the water? Is that what that is? That's got to be it, right? I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> somebody carved into this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'd have to wipe it down. I can't tell for now. I, I'm not sure about this one. Carve may, may be in bad shape. She seems very, very intense. She seems like she's definitely like, I want to be on that Xbox box art, please. I can snarl. Please put me in. That's pretty good. All right, where are we on time? That was, uh, let's see, we'll do a little recap here. We threw out uh, Backyard Wrestling. Sorry, ICP. That come, uh, brings us out to, what is it, nine? titles okay most a uh, good amount of them uh um complete at least five of them there are, are pretty much complete even them, some of them having manuals not bad shooting racing open world stealth god bless it the arcade oh and chess chess what, what does chess fall under Turn-based strategy, there you go. Turn-based strategy, boom. That's a good lot. That's pretty good. I think we did all right. All right, let me make sure we're good on time. What we're, we're gonna be at, 15 minutes? I had more, but I think we're gonna leave it there.
<laughs> I think we're going to leave it there. We got to get back to uh, Emotep, man. And then we, of course, have to check the mailbag and see what you guys are up to. Right? And since we're totally blowing it on Emotep, let's give it a little more time. I'd really like to see if we could at least clear him. Okay? Let's give it a go. Uh, what are we doing here? The mummy? You never saw it coming. The mummy, Game Boy Color. All right. Back to Galleon Full. Go, give me some audio back, baby. Phone's back on here. Here we go. All right. This time we got it. Right now, what do we need to do? We need to find the dynamite and the torch. We're going to watch out for the scarabs. And, um,. We gotta get the dynamite to the to the thinner walls. Okay, let's try it. Okay, Evelyn. Oh, let's restart that. Jonathan, grab the dynamite and go. Okay, Evelyn, get us across the pit. Okay, now we gotta find the uh, torch. Okay. All right. Blow up the dynamite, blow that up. We're gonna go this way. I think the torch is over here. Isn't it? No, we'll pick up that dynamite though while we're here. Um, for you guys really intrigued about the gameplay, I'll just show you this. I don't tend to use it, but there is a map system and the, uh, the, the levels loop, just like an old uh, Atari game or something, the levels loop. Is it unrealistic? Yeah, but don't, don't worry about it. These guys put gameplay before realism, okay? So yeah, if you're like, this is like Labyrinthian, there's no way I can handle this. Don't worry, you can use the map. All right, we've got that. Now we're gonna go into the darkness. Oh my God, no, what have I done? That's gonna be a problem. Ah, damn it! I should have jumped with Jonathan. Okay. All right, now we can see. This wasn't the way we were supposed to go, was it? Oh my god! We gotta find where to blow up the, the passageway. Okay, let's try this way. Go to, get down! Get out of there! Oh. Scarabs are like the worst. This is not where I want to go! No! No, 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 no! Oh, come on. Alright, we looped around, so that's good. We can at least loop. We're gonna have to fall through the floor. That's where we need to go. Evelyn, you're in. Get us get us over there. Oh my god. She can't climb, she's got the torch. Go, 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 okay. All right, we're gonna go to the next one. Okay, we're gonna use Jonathan to get across there. That didn't work, da, da, da. get away. Oh my God, oh my God. It just died. I'm not. The amount of times I gotta go through this stupid thing. Ugh. You're gonna have to wonder what Emotep's like. I'm not even sure he's at the end of that level. But I know one thing for sure. There's adventure to be had there. There's strategy. There's action. And it leaves you wanting more, doesn't it? And it's got lineage. Come on! Does anyone know about that one, huh? Ugh. Oh. Do yourself a favor, pick it up. And it's cheap. Of course it's cheap. It says the mummy, for God's sake. You know? Right? Who's gonna be picking this one up? Who cares? You do. Yeah, you do. Alright. See what's in the bag? 
the bag that tells no tales, where I selflessly take a step back, you direct the ship. Let's see what's in here. Picked up some candy, it's Halloween, right? Well, let's get one of these. Uh, the, the absolute worst thing I could think of, find. Uh, Harris Bow uh, gummies. I hate gummies, but what could I say? It's the passport mix. It's got gummies that all taste the same from uh, their shape from things around the world. What do we got? We got the. Uh, here's an alligator. I think. Something's growing out of his side. I think he's got a tumor. Two of them. Uh, God, am I really going to eat one of these? What is this? A ring? Is that a ring? I think that's a ring. Why is it a passport mix? It's the stuff that people had to leave behind in customs. Here's a bottle. I'll try the ring. Yeah, looks like it's cherry and something. Oh. Who eats this stuff? Gummies like the worst. Oh. Oh my god. What do we got? A letter from one of you guys. Okay. Oh. oh my god. Dear Captain Raz. Hey, that's me. Uh, what is your favorite PlayStation 1 platformer? Mine is Rayman. Also, do you have a favorite platform on another console as well? Hey, thanks a lot, Captain Reyes. Sincerely, Bose. Good friend, Bose. What's this? Thank you for writing, Bose. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Play favorite PlayStation 1 platformer? Geez, that's tough. First of all, Platformer is not exactly my cup of tea. I grew up during the 8-bit era. We were like a dime a dozen. And then you went into the Super Nintendo era. Also a dime a dozen. By the time PlayStation came out, first of all, I think I was into fighting games, RPGs by then. But it's been a long time. Been through a lot of adventures since uh, that time, since the inception of the PlayStation. Hard to say. Hard to say. If I were to choose one, it's probably going to be one with a little grit. Although, I got to be honest, Klonoa comes to mind. But I haven't even played Klonoa. It just looks like such a treat. Even for someone with a dark heart like me. Uh, we're talking 2D, right? Double check that. Let's double check that. He said platformer. Oh boy. Should have stuck with the mummy. Hmm. PlayStation One. I can't think of one. There's got to be one, right? Come on, 3D, 2D. You can't think of one that you like? I'm not going to say Spyro. Come on. What do I go back to? Does does Tenchu count? I played a lot of Tenchu. No, that's stealth. Oh, can I say Tenchu? Does that count? It's a platformer. You're jumping around. You can always cut him up if you want. I love Tenchu. Does that count? Anything else I can think of? Big library. The big library. Medieval's okay. I'm trying to think of one where I'm like, I gotta have that one. I'm not gonna say Symphony of the Night. I'm not gonna say it. A 
Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> what is the other one? <laughs> Do you have a favorite platform on any platform also? Any console also? There's got to be one. Uh, let's see. System. You're jumping around. You're picking stuff up. Putting them down. Does, does Ocarina count? I think that counts. Oh, how about, uh, what about, no. Does, does Barnyard count? You're playing a cow running around, running around the countryside? I don't think that's a platformer. That's like open world. Oh, boy. How about uh, something with guns? What would... Do I really hate, is this, is this console that forgettable for me? What did I like on the NES? Castlevania 3? Jesus. We can't do any better than Castlevania 3? Contra? We can't do better than Contra? Why do I seem so concerned with, with finding something that, that everyone else can like? Why do I have to be so unique about it? If you think I'm saying Mario anything, I will know. I'll go I will go to my seven level Mastaba before I say Mario. Okay, thanks for joining us. If you want me to not answer your question in the future, please feel free to contact the game again. It's easy. I think there's an email. Does that still exist? Do people even email anymore? Gamingellion at gmail.com. Send it to Twitch. Send it to YouTube. Send it via Carrier Pigeon. I don't care. Send me anything you want. I swear we'll, we'll devote some time to it, even if it's just me sitting here. Not having anything to say! Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate you joining us, Saqqara, Egypt, and I hope you have a season celebrating it and however you see fit. I know next time be somewhere. I don't know when, and I don't know where, but I know one thing for sure. Be there together. So until then, my friends. I will and adieu to ye fair Spanish maidens. I will and adieu, ye ladies of Spain. For do we receive daughters? For to exhum in Egypt. And lo, nevermore. Shall we see ye all gone? Keep your powder dry.